Steve. This video is an instructional video on how to make a really simple bell siphon. There are lots of flushing mechanisms that work just fine. For example, this toilet type mechanism works well, but it's costly, it's overcomplicated, and there are too many moving parts that can fail. The bell siphon we're making today couldn't be simpler. There are only four parts and none of them are moving parts. The first is a one inch irrigation pipe from an underground sprinkler system. The second is a bulkhead, which in this case is a non-threaded bulkhead. The third piece is a short piece of PVC tubing with lots of holes drilled in it. And then of course there's the bell, which in this case is just a glass. You can also use a length of tube with a cap glued on tightly, but it's kind of cool to watch the water flow underneath the glass as it's working, provided it's the right height. I couldn't find a threaded bulkhead, so I bought a brass fitting from Home Depot and heated it so that I could twist it into the plastic bulkhead and create a thread into which the vertical plastic one inch tube would fit. This brass part is used only for the purposes of threading the plastic. This is a makeshift design using parts found around the house, but of course it's simpler to just to buy the right parts and glue them together rather than thread them. Next, cut the black pipe to the proper height according to the highest water level you want in your grow beds. Next, drill a small hole at the base of the black tube. This allows for drainage during power outages or power failure so that the grow beds don't stay flooded. Now we want to slightly flare the top edge of the black tube. So heat the top two inches and you can actually stretch it by twisting it over the top of a beer bottle. This allows more water to get into the tube as it's functioning. You could also use a step up PVC fitting to accomplish this. Drill a hole in the bottom of your grow bed and you're ready to go. It's important to have a gap large enough for water to flow under the bell, whether using a glass like this with coin spacers as a demo, or using ABS or PVC where you'd cut notches about a half an inch deep all around the bottom to allow the water in. It's also important that the top of the black pipe does not touch the glass. In fact, there should be approximately a three quarter inch gap between the top of the black tube and the glass. Aquaponic and hydroponic ebb and flow systems rely on the grow beds filling and then emptying several times a day. As such, the system needs to work flawlessly without any monitoring. The way this works is that as the water rises in the grow bed, it also rises underneath the bell. When it reaches the top of the pipe, it slowly begins to trickle through the tube. As the water level in the grow bed continues to rise, more and more water gets sucked down the black plastic tube until eventually it sucks all of the air out of the bell. This is happening right now. As you see that last bubble of air gets sucked down the tube, a complete siphon is created and you can see how fast the flow rate is once it begins to drain. The drainage of this bed is much faster than the water that's being poured into it, so ultimately it ends up dumping all of its water out until the suction's broken when the air gets under the lip of the glass. Now that the siphon is broken, the water level in the grow bed will continue to rise and the process will continue over and over again forever. The trickle of water coming out of the green pipe is due to the small hole drilled in the vertical black tube prior to assembly. This allows for drainage in the event of a power failure or a pump failure. Here you can see the water level has risen again to the top of the pipe and now the air bubble is being sucked down the tube. Once this happens again, the siphon is formed again and there is a fast flow of water which will empty the grow bed. Now that you know how to make a bell siphon, there are a few critical factors that need to be discussed. Number one, the black tube height is critical. It determines the height of the water in the grow bed before the system flushes. Number two, the height of the bell is critical. The bell needs to be approximately three quarters of an inch taller than the height of the black pipe. Number three, there needs to be a gap at the bottom of the bell to allow water flow. Number four, if you're finding that the grow beds aren't draining completely, it's usually because the suction is breaking prematurely. This means the lip at the top of the black tube needs to be flared more, or the green tube underneath the grow bed needs to be slightly lengthened. Finally, place a large white tube filled with holes around the bell to protect it and allow 
water to flow freely without stones getting stuck in and around the bell. I hope this bell siphon video has been helpful. My name's Steve. If you have comments, suggestions, or improvements, please leave them on the link. Thanks and have a great day.